Welcome to the Voices for Voices TV show and podcast. I am your host, Justin Allen Hayes, also founder and executive director of Voices for Voices. Also an individual going through recovery myself. So uh, we'll, we'll get in, into that a, a little bit uh, as well as uh, you can refer back to uh, episode 106. And if you can do us a big favor and like and share and subscribe to this particular episode, that will help us uh, continue that positive trajectory to help 3 billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond. Voices for Voices is the number one ranked podcast and TV show where people turn to for expert mental health, recovery, and career advancement intelligence. Our Voices for Voices show is all about teaching you insanely actionable techniques to help you prosper, grow your self-worth, and your personal brand. So if you or somebody you know is a high achiever or someone who wants more out of life, whether mentally, physically, or spiritually, please make sure to subscribe to our TV show and podcast right now. So as you can see, the Voices for Voices show publishes episodes that focus on case studies, real life examples, actionable tips, and in the trenches reports and interviews from subscribers like you. So that sounds like something that could help you or somebody you know personally or professionally help grow, then please, again, join me by subscribing to this show, this podcast, and helping us reach our goal of helping 3 billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond across the world. Uh, so this is a, uh, a pickup, uh, let's say part two, uh, from a, an earlier episode that, that we filmed and aired uh, where we, we talked about fear, uh, how it manifests itself in my life, different uh, inflection points or I guess milestones uh, that uh, tended to point me in a, I guess a, a negative direction and a not positive uh, way. Uh, so we're going to continue that conversation as well as get into uh, some actionable scenarios that have happened recently to me and the thought process that I, I went through as these situations were uh, evolving uh, versus where I would have potentially, you know, 20, 20 years or so ago uh, without the the learnings of going through my, uh, you know, my story, my mental health, my mental illness, is which, again, um, I'm not just a, a host uh, for, for the show and podcast. I am a person, a human, that is also going through uh, recovery uh, from, you know, more, the most recent being the alcohol abuse of, uh, again, just, having, you know, they call it binge drinking. And so the times that I would drink, that was kind of what would, would, would happen. And I found myself uh, in a, uh, a very, very dark place um, and luckily ended up at a hospital and being admitted uh, for uh, five days to be able to be diagnosed, which, uh, it, again, uh, here's a visit form from a recent visit. Uh, where uh, I still have uh, the, the diagnoses of major depressive disorder, panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder, and generalized anxiety disorder. So I just feel it's helpful uh, because we've received some feedback uh, that I'm a host, uh, which I am, uh, and you know what's what's in voices for me, voices for voices for me, uh, and, and so what's in it for me is to be able to not only share my experience, to hopefully resonate and help, even if I can just help one person out of that dark place, to go seek help, to work through a, a tough time in their life, uh, that's, that's success. Uh, but what, what we're really trying to do is to, uh, as I alluded to at the outset, is to uh, you know, this huge goal of uh, wanting to help three billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond. 
So we're really looking to make a big impact. So that's why uh, the different guests we have and the topics that we cover from you know, the, the, the mental health, the sex trafficking, uh, the uh, overdosing, the opioid epidemic, the healing, um, you know, celebrity, uh, you know, such as uh, Tyrus talking, talking about, you know, his, his life and uh, what, what he has, uh, has gone through to get to the point of success uh, that, that he, he has now where he can pretty much dictate uh, the different TV shows, uh, and, and media appearances that, that, that he can uh, do. So uh, all that to really come together uh, to really help. And so that's first and foremost uh, what, what our organization, Voices for Voices, is about. Uh, me as an individual, um, I've passed through kind of that 100% narcissistic side of myself and that mindset still manifests itself from time to time. Uh, but more times than not now I am looking to help others and, and find ways to, to do so that may be a little bit unique such as uh, you know last year uh, traveling to, to Ukraine uh, you know during the time of war uh, speaking to uh, a Ukraine parliament member uh, speaking to a head of the university American University Kiev uh, hearing and being a being around when the air raid sirens are going off, hearing the missiles being intercepted and, and, and all that. So uh, we're really trying to reach as many people as possible. Uh, so at the outset, I asked if you, you'd be able to subscribe or, or like or share this particular uh, show and podcast episode. That would help us immensely to, to continue towards, towards that goal. So again, in episode 106, it's titled His Story, so His Story, uh, Lived Experience of Justin Allen Hayes. So that will be the spot where uh, you, you'll be able to uh, see me being interviewed. So we call it kind of like the flip the script uh, in, in a way where I'm being asked questions about my childhood, growing up uh, as, an, as a young adult, and, and then as, as uh, things are now in, in my life. Uh, and, and so I'm able to, again, go into much more detail than we will in, in this particular episode. Uh, but we will, uh, in each episode, try to touch on uh, bits and pieces uh, so that you know and everybody that's uh, watching and listening uh, understands that, that, yes, I, I am a host. And, uh, you know, there's obviously organizational-wise, you know, a ton of content that we, we uh, procure and what we put out and see me as kind of the face of the organization, and that's true, and that's right, uh, but I'm also an individual going through recovery myself, so I am just like many of the guests that we, we bring on, going through things still to, to this day, and still go through struggles, still go through, you know, the fear of, you know, missing out, of like, oh, well, I could be out at the club right now, well, now I'm married, and so I went from kind of that single life to you know wanting to uh you know start a family uh you know in marriage and now having a you know beautiful five-year-old daughter um and and so those are things that uh really overtook me in my mind of being uh, uh being worth value to, to me than you know the the single the party and 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 all that so taking all that aside uh having that five-day inpatient stay, being diagnosed, uh, you know, it was that fear of, oh my gosh, I'm going to be in a hospital, people, hopefully, you know, because I, in my mind, you know, somebody's in a psych ward, you know, there might be violent, so I, I hope nobody tries to get in a fight with me. Um, I, I'm fearful of that. I was fearful of uh, my diagnosis, what that was going to be. I was fearful of Am I going to have to take medication? And if I'm taking medication, am I going to have to take it the rest of my life? And how does that impact going back to my partying uh, days? And so uh, at that lowest point, I, in my mind, made the decision that uh, I, I needed to either, you know, kind of, you know, in the Third Eye Blind song, you know, put the past away in the song Jumper. So I had to just put the past away and, and move, move on into uh, what I, I had hoped to be 
bigger and better things, more positive, more more healthy uh, for for me, and then the people around me, um, not taking advantage of you know family members for different different situations that. Uh, not blowing off, you know, family get-togethers so I could go out to the bar or the club, the pregame, or or I, I was wanted to sleep in. Um, and so things now, again, with, with the family uh, is a thousand percent better than what I had uh, imagined it, it would be. Uh, so again, please check out episode 106. That's where you're going to find out uh, many things uh, in in, uh, in, in greater detail uh, about me and, and my experience, and, and hopefully that'll uh, help shed some, some light on, you know, as you're, as you're watching and listening, you know, to future episodes that uh, even if I don't touch on specific areas of my story each episode, you'll know that I'm coming from a place of recovery, and I'm still actively going through recovery, whether I mention it overtly in the episode or, or not. So, uh, I'd like to move on into, uh, you know, at the outset, we talk about actionable tips. Uh, and so, I want to talk about a, a real life situation that was kind of an ongoing situation uh, that had, had come about. So, as, you know, as we went to Ukraine last year and then previously to Poland to help Ukrainian refugees, uh, the look here in 2024 was what could what could we do, where could we go and visit uh, as a type of a mission trip or to get in front of uh, faculty or students to be able to, again, share the message of, uh, you know, we, we started up uh, or started from the bottom, we're working our way up, uh, you know, we got knocked down, but we got up again. Uh, and, and, and so with that thought process coming, coming to, to, to form its shape, uh, I have uh, a few connections, uh, so obviously we're here in the United States, just a level set. Uh, I have a few connections uh, from some of the work we've done in the past in uh, the country of Australia. And so the thought had come to mind of, well, maybe Australia could be, could be that for 2024, that it could be that, uh, you know, that trip uh, and, and we, where we could, again, reach, reach more people in person. And so as the, uh, the idea was kind of manifesting itself through my mind, I went ahead and uh, I booked flights kind of randomly uh, in, uh, in February uh, to and from Sydney, Australia, knowing that I, I would probably be heading to Melbourne and Brisbane uh, as well. So I kind of had the, the flights getting there and, and coming back. Uh, and so then the idea from a strategy-wise is, how do I fill my time, uh, the organization's time, uh, in a in a healthy way of you know, being here for after time change and all that you know maybe six total days, uh, and and so the thought process was okay now I need to reach out to those contacts, and so I reach out to some of the contacts I had, uh, and. The one contact uh, gave me uh, probably about five of their connections, uh, from media to different different schools, uh, high school, uh, college, uh, and so I had this information. My brother-in-law, uh, his uh, one of his good buddies that you know he uh, I'll say he grew up with, but uh, you know, from his hometown. Him and his wife and his his, uh, his family they they live in Brisbane, and they are in the uh, say the, the education industry. Both uh, you know, the husband and the, and the wife, uh, and then so that that's kind of uh, kind of out there on the on the horizon. So as far as you know, that goes from a city wise, that's where the Brisbane would come in, and then Melbourne would be another connection that I was on a podcast uh, with. And, and so he's from Melbourne. And so that city you know, had, had kind of its list of uh, straight connections, like direct email addresses. I, I could uh, use his name and say, you know, so-and-so uh, mentioned that I could reach out and you know, potentially be a, a guest on a TV show or radio show or 
uh, speak to the students or the faculty. Um, and then there's a school in, in Sydney. Uh, it, it's uh, University of Sydney, so real, uh, real easy to remember. Anyways, it's a large and diverse school. Uh, from uh, you know, looking at enrollment numbers, which is something I, I, I do when I'm looking at who I should reach out to. I, I, you know, the, the goal is obviously to reach a lot of people. And so if uh, we reach out and we're able to have discussions uh, with the schools that have the, the most enrollment, then obviously that's a, that, that helps. Uh, so let's say there's enrollment of 50,000 in one school and 10,000 in five different schools. It would be you know, making the arrangements for those five schools to reach that 50,000 or whatever that you know, hypothetical number is. Uh, so, situation is, so that's kind of the backstory, the, the overview. Um, so what had uh, it just happened yesterday, uh, from a, or filming uh, today, but the day before we're filming, uh, had, a, had a Zoom call with uh, like their deputy chancellor. Uh, they, uh, from like a title wise, uh, they, uh, in Australia, they, they use different terminology than we, we do usually in the U.S. We, you know, do like president or headmaster uh, and, and then down, down the line for as far as you know, who's at the top, uh, you know, chairman of the board, chairwoman of the board. So had this, uh, had this connection and had this call uh, with uh, one of the gatekeepers. So the gatekeeper for a job interview would be you know, you, the HR department. If you call directly and want to reach out to a, a hiring manager, the gatekeeper could be a, uh, an admin who could be screening calls uh, or emails. It could be AI uh, if you know, digitally. Uh, so uh, the first gatekeeper was to speak to this uh, you know, deputy chancellor. Uh, so I did that, and through the conversation, you know, I'm sharing what the presentation that I have set up, uh, you know, the key points of uh, what I w would be sharing in, in, the, in the discussion and presentation to the students. Uh, and then through the conversation, uh, it, was, uh, it was brought up that uh, because, so obviously here in the United States and Australia, we're, we're at two different seasons. You know, they're kind of in their summer season coming out of that. We're uh, you know, kind of in, in the midst of winter. Uh, even though it just kind of kicked off in, in earnest real yesterday. Um, but anyways, uh, coming back to, to the, uh, the story. So I have this call, and we're, we're talking, and uh, the deputy chancellor says, this is great, this is great information, can you send me some links of some of the shows? So I was able to send, one of the links was 106, you know, all about me, all about my lived experience, you know, kind of from A, a to Z. And there's a couple other episodes that I, I added as well, uh, as well as uh, some photos the, from different, uh, different media. Uh, so uh, one of the photos uh, is uh, of me speaking to a uh, local high school, and there's probably, I don't know, 200 or so students and faculty in the stands in the gym, and then I'm speaking to them, and the photo is behind me, and so you can see the, the back of me and then the, the layout of the students. Um, and then there's another photo from another speaking engagement uh, where you can see from like a personal branding standpoint uh, the areas that I, I touch on. So I included all that information, sent it uh, on, and the, uh, the, the students themselves, they have actual committees set up that the students make the decisions on who they bring in and, and who they don't. Uh, to uh, to speak, and so while I have, like I said, I have Brisbane, I have Melbourne, kind of on the on the burners here, uh, but I wanted to see how the conversation went with uh, you know, the University of Sydney, and so the conversation went great, uh, but because of the seasons and when uh, you know, school's in session and, and that, uh, the the students really aren't going to be getting back in. in uh, you know, back on campus uh, in earnest, meaning uh, usually, you know, athletes, you know, will most likely stay at a university year-round, but other students, you know, they'll move out in the summertime, then they'll move back come, you know, at the start of the term. And so that, that 
was happening or will be happening, you know, end of February, early March. And so the flights I have set up originally uh, are in the middle to the end of February. So the actionable tip of, so what was my thought process? So my thought process is I want to see how this happens, see what progresses uh, before I go ahead and reach out to uh, these more sure things, what we'll call it, uh, where you know, the, the likelihood is, is, uh, is high uh, to, to be able to you know, have, have these uh, engagements and, and, uh, and, and the like. Uh, and so that's what I'm doing. So I'm going to be canceling the flight that I have, uh, and I get the you know, refund of the, the money. And then once we hear back from the committees, uh, you know, whether end of February and March, yay or nay, and again, uh, I have a fear of, oh my gosh, what if they come back and say no? You know, it, is there something wrong with me? And so I just have to you know, keep myself busy doing the things that I love, like this, to be sharing uh, stories like this. Um, and so again, cancel the flights. The dollars are there. Once we hear back from the committees, yay or nay, then we can look at dates, uh, and, and I can reach out to those other connections in Brisbane and Melbourne. And so that's kind of how the thought process in my mind worked. And uh, once, once the uh, conversation happened yesterday, it was an easy uh, action for me to take uh, by you know, going ahead and canceling the flights and, uh, and, and waiting and, and hearing. So then I'm able to you know, potentially hit th those three big cities. And Perth is also uh, an, an opportunity as well. So the extra time isn't all bad because I'm able to continue to grow my network on, on LinkedIn uh, through uh, you know, the various channels, the, dif the different, uh, you know, through the government uh, officials to potentially meet, uh, interview uh, one or, or several of them, uh, mental health organizations, uh, additional schools, additional contacts. And so 20 years ago, if I'm going through this situation, I would have been you know, so upset, so mad, like, oh my gosh, now I gotta wait what, six weeks or whatever to, to even get any feedback, and then to plan the trip, and, uh, and then I, um, it, it would just put me in a, in a tough bind, but I kinda in the back of my mind thought there might be some type of uh, lag time, between meeting, you know, th virtually, and a committee or somebody has to make the decision that that was going to happen, that I didn't reach out to the contacts in Brisbane uh, and uh, Melbourne, because otherwise I would have, you know, like maybe ten different conversations, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, I know I told you this, but we're going to pivot, but I don't know when exactly it's going to be, so that's my action uh, of a, uh, you know, a 10,000 or so mile uh, trip from the United States to, to the other side of the world of going through uh, a thought process of, uh, you know, kind of where I was at in kind of an earlier part of my life and then where I'm at now that it was easy just to kind of move on um, and, again, to cancel the flight and, and, and have... Uh, the contact information still stored in a Word doc, so when the time comes, I'm able to pivot and jump right in. So it's yay, uh, yes, then, okay, what are the dates? What do I have available What with the school and, and that? If it's great information, but for whatever reason, it, it, it doesn't fit right now, that's okay. So I have to be okay with a no. Um, and so I do have that fear of a no, uh, but I am a, in a much better place of just continuing to, to move on because I already have contacts in two other cities in, in the country. So again, worst case scenario, I hit the two out of the three cities. Best case scenario, I hit three out of the three uh, cities that I want. And a potentially, uh, again, a Perth might be uh, the fourth or the third if, if Sydney doesn't, doesn't work out. So this episode, hopefully... I believe is enlightening to, uh, again, actionable tips and actual real life 
experience, situation that is occurring. You know, we can talk about hypotheticals and that, you know, all day long, and, and, and sometimes we do on the show. Um, but I, I felt that it was important, given the timing of when we're filming this, uh, and, and all that put together, that it was a, a good spot for us to share with, with you. Uh, that maybe you're going through uh, something similar. Maybe it's not traveling to a, you know, a, a country 10,000 miles away. Uh, maybe it's deciding uh, to go out to the bar with a few friends or uh, go on a, a blind date with, with, with somebody. And you know, you're, you're making those decisions. And you know, both are happening at kind of the same time, but different areas. Uh, and so that's just kind of where that thought process comes in. And it comes back to uh, what I cover in episode 106 when I'm talking about my lived experience. I had to get to a point to accept myself, accept my flaws, uh, the understanding. Uh, I mean, I knew I wasn't perfect before, but really just taking that to heart and going, okay, I'm going to do the best I can. Just like yesterday in class, when the tech issues were happening, there's nothing I can do. I had to wait till uh, the computer rebooted. Uh, if, uh, like the second class, uh, when uh, we were trying to pull Zoom in because uh, the roads were, were bad and one of our students wasn't able to, to make it, so last minute change, get Zoom booted up, it froze the computer system. So I had to reset it, still didn't work, had to call IT. They came and it took kind of you know, one individual and then the manager to fix it. And I just had to go on with, with, with class uh, as far as other things that I could do that I didn't need the projector for. Uh, so I really hope that this episode has been uh, helpful and enlightening uh, about me, uh, about uh, what we're, we're trying to do and what, not even what we're trying to do, what we are doing with Voices for Voices. Um, and I have no doubt that we'll reach our goal at, at some point in the future of helping 3 billion people over the course of my lifetime and beyond. We've already reached close to that uh, with uh, kind of awareness of being uh, kind of a product placement uh, in a television show that, you know, touched four to 500 million households across the world uh, on three different occasions. Uh, and, and so we're... Uh, you know, the, the brand is out there, and we are just uh, very excited uh, because we just received the news yesterday that Voices for Voices um, is going to be you know, trademarked or you know, registered. So we're going to be able to put the, the R with the circle after Voices for Voices. And so we're going to be uh, protected under law uh, in, uh, in the work that we're, we're doing. Uh, so we're, we're, taking, we're taking serious steps for longevity that we want this organization not only to be here when I'm here, but we want, it, we want there to be a legacy and, and to continue. Uh, so if you can please subscribe, like, share, uh, comment, we, we would really appreciate it. And we are a 501c3. If you can make a donation, we'd appreciate uh, every cent helps. So until next time, I am your host and uh, recovering alcoholic uh, substance abuser, Justin Allen Hayes. This has been another episode of the Voices for Voices TV show and podcast. Thank you for joining us. And until next time, please be a voice for you or somebody in need.